respected Guruji, I am a Buddhist and a Vipassana practitioner. I have a question which I have asked many Vipassana teachers and other Gurus, but everybody said that no one can answer this. Here you see, I mean, this respect. You see, you are a Guru with long beard. A person is asking a question. Let us say he is naive. Let us say even he have half a brain. Let us say he is just a stupid. You don't laugh at people like this. This is the start. I mean, he is not from, I mean, he is a Buddha. He is speaking nicely and you are there supposedly to teach him. And that's why he is asking you. So what is the response? This is, a, this is, a, uh, this is like Mimi Hijab is making mockery of David Wood. The difference is that David Wood is a smart person, Mimi Hijab is the idiot. But here, supposedly he is the smart person, and that one, the kid, is asking questions. So why we are laughing? Okay. Because he said nobody knows the answer? Well, he then you, he asked many people, and nobody gave the answer. I mean, what's, what is funny about that? Disrespect. In one of your video you mentioned, and also it is said in Buddhism, that rebirth is due to our unfulfilled desire or karma. I accept this, but then a question arises. Let us suppose I took birth for millions of times because of my karma desire. But before my very first birth, there was no body, no mind, karma, desire, or nothing of me existed. Then why and how that very first birth came to existence? See, smart question actually. This is a question checkmate for the Hindu belief. He gave us a speech about karma, the pre-existence, and this guy is asking you a question, okay, what, where was one my karma before I exist anyway? <clears throat> Let us see what he will say. Let us see now who is the smart. The one who asked the question, which they make mockery of him, or the one who is going to give the answer, which is going to be no answer. Listen carefully and you will see, he will speak forever, he will say nothing. Give us the answer. <coughs> now, uh, even I'm wondering about that about you. See? <laughs> He's making mockery of him. Well, <laughs> now you are a decent guy, I'm like this, what to do? What is this? The guy, his name is decent, his name. Why well, you are making fun of him? Or maybe he said, I am a decent guy, so? And the crowd are laughing. I mean, this is actually, this is, this is very disgusting. To make fun of somebody in your house, coming into your house, asking you a question in a nice way, gently and nicely and kindly. He did not insult you, he did not say anything. What is this mockery is about? Let's take that question further back. It's not just about yoga. <coughs> well, in the yogic culture, mm. there are theories which are explained in the form of dialectical stories, how uh, Shiva was like Shava. Shava means a corpse. He was inert, phenomenal energy but inert. Then Shiva, he was a, a, an energy. Okay. And take notes. An energy or Shakti came and danced around him, upon... Okay, how, how he was energy and then an energy came and danced around him, which one is the energy? So now we have two energy dancing around with each other. And what does that have to do with the question? I'm just trying to make you Think carefully of what this guy is saying. He's going nowhere and you will notice nothing of what he said now. Makes sense. Let us go back a little bit because I disturbed the conversation. Was like Shava. <coughs> Shava means a corpse. Mm, a corpse. He was inert. Phenomenal energy but inert. Mm -hmm. Then energy or Shakti came and danced mm. around him, upon him. Mm. Then he got is what? I woke up. Well, we are uh, 
you know, picturizing it as a man and a woman. But that's not what we're talking about. I wish you Inert did. means nothing happening, no reverberation. <coughs> no reverberation means no creation. Energy got introduced, reverberation started. From a simple basic reverberation, it got more and more complex. As reverberations became more complex, it became matter. Matter became small molecules, they became planets. <laughs> what, what, what? So, uh, energy and uh, uh, vibrate and became molecule and became what? How, how this happened? What do you mean? First of all, when you say energy, energy itself, it has to be electron. As, as long as you are talking about physics and science. So what vibrate and this was nothing? When you say energy, what, what, what do you mean by energy? Isn't it something exists? Energy is something exists, it's not something. And then the creation happened. This, this, this is the most funny answer ever. Listen carefully how he is trying to brainwash this kid by giving no answer. An answer even atheists don't accept. No reverberation means no creation. Energy got introduced, reverberation started. Mm. From a simple basic reverberation, it got... More what reverberation? Where is the energy coming from? I mean, the guy is asking you how a creation happened. Shouldn't you ask, tell, tell him who created the energy? The energy you are talking about isn't a creation. Either this energy is a creation by itself or it exists. I mean, someone created or it exists by itself. Is that God? But he just said there is no creation happening. So if we put now energy in a place, now next to it, next to it, tomorrow we will find something created just because there's energy next to it? In which science is that? In which logic? In which philosophy? Well, you have a microwave full of energy. I'm going to turn it on, and tomorrow next to the microwave I will find a chicken. Right? Energy is coming from God Shiva. My friend, hold on. He just told you that energy came to Shiva. Not Shiva, he made the energy. Are you listening? Energy came around Shiva and started dancing. What's wrong with you? Listen carefully again. Let me play it for you again. <laughs> Here we go. Let's take that question further back. It's not just about your birth. Well, in the yogic culture, Mm -hmm. There are theories which are explained in the form of dialectical stories, how uh, Shiva was like Shava. Shava. Shiva was like what? Who is a Hindu here can help us? And then energy came and danced around him. So the one who is saying energy is God, that's funny. So who is Shiva? Shava means a corpse. He was inert. Phenomenal energy, but inert. See? Then energy or Shakti came and danced around him, mm. upon him. So now we have two energy. If Shiva is an energy and other energy came, so who is the other, other energy who came and danced around him? And later he will tell you it's a woman. <laughs> so there is nothing but it is. But from the beginning we are talking about women and men now. So the energy who is dancing around Shiva is women. He will say that in a second. Then he got kind of woke up. Well, we are, uh, you know, picturizing it as a man and a woman, but that's not what we're talking about. Inert means nothing happening, no reverberation. No reverberation. No reverberation means no, reverberation. no creation. No creation. Energy got introduced, reverberation started. Mm. From a simple basic reverberation, it got more and more complex. Mm -hmm. As reverberations became more complex, it became matter. Matter became small molecules, they became planets. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Matter became a small molecule. Oh. If matter is exist, which one is going to exist first, the matter or the small thing? Matter became a small... What?
Well, you just said matter. The ma when we say the matter, it means it already exists, but not became something. And the small molecules, uh, if they came after the matter, that would be crazy. I, I thought I thought they, they don't come after. I think they are inside it, you know. I never heard that matter come first and then the molecule come after. And this is the answer of a guru. Okay, so now, you know, okay, tell us more, more wisdom. started. From a simple basic reverberation, it got more and more complex. As reverberations became more complex, it mm. became matter. Matter became small molecules, they became planets. Planets became many things, life happened, the right... Mm. They became planets. They became what? They became planets. Well, how they multiply themselves to become a planet? You see, this guy, he just believed in the multiply. Because they were nothing, it was energy, dancing around energy. And then matter and the molecules, and then they start became more complex and then became a planet. So from a small thing to a huge thing, they are growing in number, they are giving babies. Okay. Variety of things, you know the evolutionary theory from there on. Evolutionary theory only starts after life has started or at the beginning probably. But if you go back, creation itself, we may not know the exact trajectory of how it happened, but we approximately know how it happened even as per modern science. Uh, uh, we didn't know how it happened, you just told him how it happened. So what you were talking about, energy, the, what is that? You just said the evolution is about the, you know, like life changing, you know, evolution of life, which means after life has exist. But you mentioned before that, already you did. Itself, We may not know the exact trajectory of how it happened, but we approximately know how it happened even as per modern science. So in the modern scientific parlance, the same thing is said today that if you apply energy, not even into it, just around it, suppose you create vacuum in a container and apply energy not into the vacuum, just around it, uh, virtual protons and virtual neutrons will erupt, that means, Creation begins to happen. That's false. That's not a creation. It's a, if a proton, electron, they are moving, have nothing to do with the creation. This is movement of energy. It is the conduct of energy. This is what electricity is about. We create a current. But we are not creating an electron. So the energy is simply, it exists. We are just moving it. You see, even the earth, the everything we have, the energy we have, we are not really creating energy. We are using energy which is exist, either the energy of oil, gas, uh, uh, you know, uh, electricity which is exists in the earth already, uh, or the energy of the sun. Even trees, they take energy from the sun and they convert it into their own food and su uh, supplement. And en this is the energy. The food we eat is energy. So. When this guy is talking about creation by moving electron, that is a false statement. There's no way or anyone, anyone who is a scientist, he will agree with this. Right? His belief harms no one and should be respected. Uh, you know, for those who don't like me speaking about this guy, he can leave. I don't care, he's a Hindu or what, who cares? Anyone he speaks false, we are going to speak about his false. He can be Christian, he can be a Hindu, he can be a Jew. I have videos against people who claim to be Christians. So if you are a person who don't like to hear this, take take a hike, take your uh, broad tone with you. 
So this is a false analogy and this is a false philosophy. And until now, he did not give the answer to the poor guy who's waiting for the answer. Until now, all what we hear, this guy is just talking about energy, energy, energy. But where the energy came from? And what is energy? Shouldn't you define the energy before you talk about energy? So we can understand what energy you are talking about. Is that a heat? Is that a moving power? Is that what is what, what this is energy is about? Let us listen more. Maybe he soon will get into the answer. Until now, talk is cheap. Mean nothing, say nothing. Uh, virtual protons and virtual neutrons will erupt. Hmm. That means creation begins to happen. This is creation, Proton, huh? neutron, uh, just have to get together for an atom to happen. Once an atom has happened... <laughs> you know, and this guy, I think he is an engineer too. So, proton and the neutron and electron, they have just to get together and then atom will happen. And this is not... this is not true. Because those are not even free. What get together? Are they are they free? Like they they spin, swim in the space by themselves? What are you talking about? Happen creation is started. So similar things are said in modern science. Uh, what I don't want to go into any theories, but mm -hmm. obviously creation began somewhere. Mm. Somewhere means it may not be within the projections of human mind in terms of time, because it's not one, but in the yogic system, there have been estimates that there have been 84 creations till now, 83 creations till now, this is the 84th one. And up to 112 cycles of creation can happen. Beyond that, creation will be... Hey, who is the one who is giving you those numbers? I mean, what those numbers is about? What... and what does have to do with the topic? Let us say those numbers are accurate. Still, you did not answer anything about the question. Material free, just pure energy creation. Hmm. But we're talking in terms of maybe billions of years or trillions of years, I don't know. Mm. But those projections are made. Well, obviously it's just a theory. Nobody can prove or disprove anything about it. So but... why... so why you mention it? Why you mention it? I have a theory, I have a different theory. I believe that uh, I have my theory that the one who created the energy you're talking about, it was a chicken. Eh, it's my theory. Prove me wrong. If you say to me, chicken today, they cannot do it, I say this, the chicken at that time, they were different. Prove me wrong. So, what kind of a person who speak logic, he speak about a theory, no one can prove or disapprove. Which means you, you brought us nothing. It's like you brought us a dish empty from food and say, I cannot prove to you that we have food and I cannot disapprove to you that they have no food. So, what is the food? Still, we don't have the food. What is the answer? It looks like a plausible theory because the markings of 83 creations are there in our system, right. in various aspects of life around us. Mm. The markings of 83 and this being 84 are there. See, the same, the same that we hear from the Muslims about number 19, you remember? Number 19? And they, f they fabricate stories about number 19, the Quran and number 19 and etc. and all this garbage, you know? Ah, okay, this is the same. Listen to this. There for those who look very closely at it. So how did you, such a decent guy, happen? And now he's making fun of him because he said, I am a decent guy, I have a question, okay. Well, so this question doesn't go that far as I took it just now. It's talking about if I did not have karmic substance, how did I happen? That's a question. Actually, here the problem. He asked you about the karma substance. What is that? What karma substance? The guy, he is exists because simply his mother, she had sex with his father. What karma substance have to do with this? 
I mean, do we need to complicate the whole story? So if you are talking about this guy, he was, he was, how he was exist, the answer is very simple. His dad, he went and have sex with his mom. If you are talking about the first man, then here you are in trouble. What karma and what, what is the karma? If there is nothing, this is the question. <laughs> well, you don't need a spiritual answer, Charles Darwin himself. Charles Darwin, he answered it? This is what a guru he say to his followers? Charles Darwin is a big filthy racist. He put a black person in a cage to prove that black people used to be monkey. If he was exist today, we will put him in the street and everybody will spit on his face. This is your example. Charles Darwin, he proved nothing. What he proved? Listen carefully. He went in a circle, non-stop, and now he arrived to the corner of a Charles Darwin. Karmic substance, how did I happen? That's a question. Well, you don't need a spiritual answer. Charles Darwin himself mm -hmm. has explained this. You were a single-celled creature, and then you became two-celled. Darwin, he did not say this is stupid things. What are you talking? Single uh, three creature. What are you talking about? Evolution is not about single became two. And even if you say such a thing about one became two, how the first one came to existence? The first cell. And you know the idea of Darwinism is the most stupid idea. As an example, let us say. I was one cell and then I became two cells. But how my body taught my body that I need to have, I need to be two cells. And then how my cells, they decide to have an eye. And then how my cells decide to make a heart. I am alive already. Is it, is it Darwinism built to teach that it's the need what make things happen? The needs. So what is the need of seeing if I do not know what is seeing? If somebody is blind, he never saw. He will never know what seeing means, unless somebody else he can see. He can tell him, well, I have eyes, I can see, you cannot. And then he explained to him what mean to have eyes. So how a cell will be able to organize itself and notice, I need to create eye. And then the cell is going to make an eye design in a very complex way. How that can happen? You know what? I like to fly. How come I did not, I was not able to fly when my cells, they knew inside me, I like to fly. Can I wake up in the morning, I have wings? Why my cells is not doing that? Why the cells of a human being after all those millions of years, as you claim, did not come, as, as you see, a man, a human being is desperate to fly to the point he made airplanes. Why his cells did not create for him feathers? Right? The version isn't about that, it is just about the change, change of genetic and environment. My friend, I, I understand, you, you know, the, uh, we, we, we as a Christian, we believe that God, he gave us ability to adopt. So if evolution is about adopting situation, we believe in that. As an example, if you're a human being, he live in the mountains, you will notice that those who live in the mountains, they have wide uh, 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 shoulders, they have big chest, why? Because they have less oxygen there. That is possible. But the garbage they are coming to us with, and yet this guy, he claimed to be a spiritual guru, is a garbage. Why you are bringing a false theory, no one can prove it. Because scientists themselves, many of them reject Darwin. There is some scientists accept Darwin. There is many that reject Darwin. Scientists, not me and you, religious people. Did you ask yourself how a male and female came to existence? I mean, how a cell convinced itself, I'm going to create two cells, one have penis and one have vagina. That is impossible. And that penis will fit perfectly to go there. Excuse my language. You understand what I'm saying? That is impossible. In order to do such a design, you have, an, you have to have an outsider thinking. 
designing the shape, not only the, 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 the job, even the shape, how the shape is designed. So this is a very stupid theory even to mention. And you notice here, he contradict himself from the beginning. In the beginning, there was nothing, supposedly, it was energy. Now he's talking about cells. And one cell became two cells. Okay, hold on, forget about the cell. Well, what about rocks? How they came to existence? How about sand? How about all kinds of material? Forget about living things. What is your explanation for them? The sun was a small sun and then became two sun and they became 50 sun and million sun. You became three cell, then you became multi cell. Now you become little more. <laughs> little more only. Mm. Decently better. A decent development from a single cell has happened. <laughs> so, in the process from the single celled animal, from an atom to a molecule, Right now, this is a wonderful time to ask this question because there is virus. A virus is not a full-fledged life. It has proteins and enzymes to make it a life, but it's not yet life. Only when it enters your cell, it has a life. But in… by itself, it has no life, just a certain combo of protein. So decent… Uh, what? Dushyanta. Oh. And then now we have no answer. All this blah, 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 blah. The guy is asking how I came to existence without my karma, because Hindu, they believe in the karma thing. That before you became a person, that the karma is there. Okay, how I am there, how that my karma there, if I am not there yet. So you were also pre-life, became life, became more and more complex life. Complexity itself... Pre-life? you also pre-life. Anyone can explain to me how you were pre-life? Is he making him an enzyme? And then the enzyme will put it inside the cell, and then the cell... and that enzyme will become a life inside the cell? This is what life is about? But you do not explain how the cell came to exist. And he told you how I am exist. You say to him, pre-life, the one who keeps saying to me, please answer my question, my friend, I will answer your question, but your question is so stupid to be answered. I mean, your question, so stupid to the point, it's coming while we are playing a video, talking about this guy, and you are repeating your question, you want your question to be answered, as long as there's nothing we are busy about except you. This is why I say your question is so stupid. Secondly, you are asking me about how the version, the version birth, well, this is a stupidity itself. Version birth mean that the version she gave birth. How that happened, it's a miracle. And what is miracle? It is something nobody can explain. It's a God power. So why it is so hard for you, and you keep repeat the same question 24 hours, 7 days a week, until we answer you, and the answer means nothing to you at the end? What scientific process? There's nothing scientific about it. What no Christians say that virgin birth is scientific, because God is above science. Science is you practice something to find something. That is what science is. God, he creates things above science. And this is why this guy is struggling to, to explain how life came to existence. If science can explain it, we will not be here. No science can explain anything.
Some people, they are so stupid, so foolish. We Christians, we don't believe in science. We laugh at science, actually, because most of science, science is something changeable. Today they believe in something, tomorrow they discover they are wrong and they switch their opinion. This is what science is. Not long time ago, scientists themselves, they used to believe the earth is flat. After that, they found that they are a bunch of donkeys. Not long time ago, scientists, they believe in all the theory of Einstein. And not long after, they found that they are donkeys. Because some of the theory of Einstein is true. Or let us say, according to them, is true. Not all of it. Or in Newton, etc. So, science is a temporary position of knowledge that can change the bend in the discovery. So as long we have, this is a limited discovery, we don't have the full knowledge, that is not really a science, this is temporary knowledge. This is why you see sciences today, they are so much in struggle to fight a little tiny virus. Because this science is in disability. Why? Because they have limited ability and limited knowledge. So all the science they have come to be a joke. What is your science? People dying by thousands. All the computers, oh, where is Darwin? Can Darwin help us? And now what they do, they are practicing, practicing drugs on that virus, and that practice will teach them about the response of the virus, which means there's no science really. It's just a laboratory. You know, they call it science, but it's not science. I, put, I, I bring an ant, I put salt in the ant, the ant did not like salt, so I write down this ant did not like salt. That is their science. Now they have tools way better than before. They have computers, they can see inside cells, they can see the change, but still it's just a practice of trying things, finding out reaction and action of this virus so we can find it and this guy here is struggling with his computer in his head trying to explain how god or whatever he, he does not say god how this energy which he claimed came to existence and then things became one and two and the three and four dancing energy tell his karma karma is not necessarily even now as you sit here, karma is not necessarily only what you do like this. The thoughts that pass in your mind are karma, emotions that pass in your mind right now are karma. Simply, a thought just passed in your mind. You looked at the person next to you, thought, why is he here? He should be on the roof with the monkeys. <laughs> what is this? This is the karma? Karma, as I know, the Hindu believe in it, that it's a sum of a per like the person actions in the previous state of existence, not after he is exist, which is deciding the fate in the future. And the guy is asking you, if I never exist, if I am not exist yet, how my karma exists, which is going to decide my future. And he's talking about the starting point, before I came anyway, any, uh, because, you know, the Hindus believe, like, uh, you, you die as a, as a human, you might come back as a cat, right? So, he's saying before all of this, when I was nothing, where was my karma? And look what he's answering. This is the question. My pre-exist action previous the state of existence where it was and now he's talking about in a funny stupid things like you see a guy next to you and he looked like a monkey and you say this guy is a monkey and what does this have to do with our topic just like that you know sometimes thought like this come hello So this karma just happened inadvertently, not caused by you, caused by the monkeys dancing on the roof. But uh, hold on, this question asking you, the karma he had before he exists, what the monkey in the roof? You see how they try to make it a mockery to get away from the question? 
you have no answer after all what we are listening for the last nine minutes until now he said nothing useful the hindu believe in the karma in a pre-existence muslim they believe in the same thing by the way they call it destiny when allah he made you he write in you inside you he sent the angel he ordered him to write things before you are born your fate your destiny the, the Hindus, they are a little bit different. It's a, a pre-exist even you as inside your womb. The Muslim, they, they say after you get inside the womb, then Allah, he sends somebody and he write the angel, he write your faith. But all what he said have nothing to do with the question. So because monkeys came there, you looked at this guy, at a certain angle, he looked a certain way to you. <laughs> maybe it's the lighting, maybe it's the way he sat, maybe something, and a thought came and went. Now you performed a karma. Hmm. That somewhere you look at another human being and you think he's a monkey. Now this won't stop here, you understand? Now you looked at him and thought you're a monkey. Tomorrow we change your department and you're in the monkey department. Can you believe that this is an adult conversation? And you can tell the one who they are listening, they are a bunch of shallow people, like, like the fan of Mimi Hijab. It's a mockery time, and nothing there is valuable. What I look, you know, you look at a person next to you, you, you see him like a monkey. Obviously, you are the one who see people like monkeys. I don't see people next to me look like monkeys. And then second day, you find yourself working in the department of this monkey. And now, you know, this monkey, he will be giving you orders. Oh my God, I have to work with this monkey today. It will continue. And if, suppose, the situations are placed like that, he is in charge of the department, you have to work under him. Do I have to be instructed by a monkey like this? It will grow. And this is how you became a racist. <laughs> this is how you explain a racist? <laughs> I mean, oh boy. You see, I make fun of Zachary Naik always, but you are trying to beat him today. So, this is how you became a racist? Because this guy, he don't like a person, how he looked like, so he thought, he said in his, in his head, this guy looked like a monkey, and then he became his boss. And then this is racism. Do you know even what racism is? Racism is something you do against a race, not a person. So if a person belongs to that race, and you act against him because he is from that race, that is racism. Not a person you look like him, you, you, you feel like he's a monkey. What does this have to do with racism? So you don't even know the definition of racism. And until now, we do not know what is the answer. I mean, what does this have to do with my topic? Before I exist, what was my karma? Very embarrassing. All right. Because initially it's just a passing thought. Then depending on situations, how they corner you here, there, there, slowly it multiplies. This is even happening to every other creature. So Somebody's saying, he might be ignorant, but at least he is not trying to convert people with his lies. That's, that's, that's not smart, my friend. This is his lies. This is converting you to his lies. Already he is converting you. He making you believe in his lies. He is more dangerous than somebody want to say to you, convert to Islam. Because now you, if you are listening, you are shallow, you believe in this garbage. So who said he's not trying to convert you? Anyone he claimed to be a guru or a master or a teacher, he is teaching you something and he wants you to believe in something. So if he is not a truthful, he is converting you. It doesn't matter if he name a religion or not. Already you are, you became his potato. You are a follower of him and you believe in what he say. So now what you learn from this, that racism, that you look at a person and you think he's a monkey, second day he worked for you, you hate him, so that, that is racism. In fact, you know, Hinduism is very racist. They, they, they divide you know, but the racism there is, is different. It's a religious uh, racism. They divide the society into ranks and levels. So the one who is from the Brahma, they are 
the highest, they are the holy, they are the good ones, and there is the good one. And the society is separated to the point this person cannot marry from that rank. If you are a person who works as a barber, your son is going to work as a barber. This is your rank. If you are from the Brahma, you are the top. You marry from the Brahma. So as long as you understand racism about the monkeys, so which monkeys you believe in? How your society divide people into monkeys instead of dividing them into one unity of a human being, respecting them all. Gradually, karmic substance builds up, builds up, becomes more and more complex. Well, clearly, evolutionary sciences are telling us the initial human beings were very, very simple, half-bent human beings, very small brain, they couldn't think much, they just survived like any other creature. Everybody knows that, right? So from there you built your karma. I don't know why nobody could answer this question for you. Everybody... Supposedly he is the one who answered it. I mean, did you see? From there you built your karma. You see a guy second, second uh, next to you, and you look at him, he looked like a monkey. This is where you built your... The guy is saying to you, before I exist, this is a guru. In different video, a person asked him about why Hindus, they don't allow women to enter temple. And by the way, I understand that religions can be different, and they have reasoning for some women, or let us say women, not to enter a certain place. So I will not consider that as a discrimination, but the answer he gave is horrible. Listen to this. Oh, women's rights, yes. <laughs> About Shani Signapur, see, first of all you have a misunderstanding that Indian temple is a place of prayer. Indian temple is not a place of prayer, I want you to know this. Mm -hmm. Different temples were built in different ways for specific purposes. Shani temple is built for occult purposes. Occult means, you know what's occult? Black, black, black magic. So all this is spiritual. And would you believe in, in a black magic and you practice a black magic in your temple? Do you believe it? Look at this. Why the women cannot enter that temple? Because this is the temple of a black magic. Temple is built for occult purposes. Occult means, you know what's occult? What is the Telugu word for occult? Hmm? What? What is that? What, what people call as black magic or whatever, you know? There are certain occult practices where if the occult practices are being done, women in state of pregnancy, in menstrual cycles, it could seriously impact their life. <laughs> so they said women should not go. It was all. This is the guru. So women, they cannot go to this temple because they do black magic there. <laughs> I thought only Muhammad the dummy, he came with the black magic and Harut, Harut and Marut and he built a temple in the baby loan to open school of Hori Buter. But here we go, the guru here is saying that we have a temple for Hori Buter. And the women, she did not go there because they get, might get hurt by black magic. Different video. This is a video the Hindus posted, uh, uh, Sad Garu, Zakir Naik, what uh, there is in heaven, Hindu heaven. Okay. We, you will leave your body here and go to heaven. You went to heaven without a body. What are you going to do with good food and virgins? This is what I want to know. <laughs> when you don't have a body. Okay, but uh, hold on. If you are trying to answer the Muslims, the Muslims don't believe that they are going to be in heaven without body. So you are answering whom? You are answering the Hindus? Uh, I'm not sure what is that is about. You see, the logic is when you, when you debate somebody, you debate him about what he believes. Uh, secondly, if you have nobody, if you don't have a body, and now you are going to heaven, and uh, you are the one who just said, that before you have a body, you have a karma. So who's going to go there, the karma 
or you what what is going there exactly you, you, you don't have body so what is going to go listen carefully what he said here and go to heaven you went to heaven without a body what are you going to do when you say you went to heaven without a body you who what do you mean you is that a spirit so we go back to the first question. He said to you, before I was exist, where was my karma? He was no spirit yet. <laughs> and he told him he was exist in the pre-exist situation. In the pre-exist. I mean, do you see, this kind of philosophy, it's just a person talking, 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 saying nothing. You learn nothing. You go in dizzy, you get out dizzy. You learn nothing, he taught you nothing. So, you go now to heaven, you, without body, what you would do with the virgins and the food. I, I agree what you would do with the virgin, with, with, but you who, who will go to heaven? You, you who? Shouldn't you say a spirit, a soul, what? With good food and virgins, this is what I want to know. <laughs> when you don't have a body. So, I am saying, heavens will collapse. Heaven will collapse. How, how heaven, they will collapse. I mean, what is this guy is talking about? So he's saying there's no heaven. So what you believe, if you are a good person, you come back again to life as a human being. If you are a bad person, you came as a rat or a cat or something. Because heaven supposedly is about the idea of reward. If you don't believe in reward and punishment, then why you teach all the teaching of the Hindus? And then, you know, in the video, they jump to Zach and Mike, which is going to be more funny. Once people start asking logical questions, heavens will collapse. <laughs> See, once, question, once people, they start asking logical questions, heaven will collapse, but he collapsed too. The guy asked you, where was my karma before my pre-existence? You gave him nothing. You start talking about a monkey sitting next to you. Now, Zach and Mike here. Uh, by Muslim, uh, men get 72 go women, good. Uh, hur. But in, uh, hur. The one who is saying to me, I challenge you to show the whole video. Uh, my friend, the video is 21 minutes already, we played what? And the answer is finished. What we'll played the whole video? And I said to you, go and watch it all. Still, there's no answer. Play the whole video. And we play it. You want to play it? We play it. Still, what is the answer? If the guy could not answer in the first 12 minutes of the question, I mean, when the answer would come? Tomorrow? This is Zachar Naik. But uh, in, in Christian, we go to heaven with our family. And I want to know what kind of heaven in Muslim for women. Sister said that the father was a Muslim, mother is a Christian, that the mother brought you up, correct? Yeah. So do you interact with the father or don't you interact with the father? Do you interact with the father? With my or mother. No? So you live with your mother, not with the father? No. The sister said, father is a Muslim, mother is a Christian, but mother has brought her up. She lived more with the mother and mother made her a Christian. So now she's confused. Mother said that if Muslims go to heaven, then they get 72 poor, 72 women, the men. What will the women get? And yes. It's so as far as your first question, your second question answer first and then come back to your first question. As far as the question is concerned, that if the men go to heaven, they'll get 72 poor, that beautiful woman, what will the woman get? The same question was asked by Prophet Aisha, may Allah be with her, who's the wife of the Prophet. So the wife of the Prophet replied that the woman will get that which your heart hasn't desired, what your eyes hasn't seen, what your ear hasn't heard about. Well, what is that? <laughs> The woman, she will get what her heart is desire. So why the Quran describing what the, what the man will have as a woman, and actually in different video, I thought this is the same video, where he said the word hur is not male, is not female, it's male and female. This is the answer? She will get whatever she desire? What if she desire a monkey, chimpanzee? What if she desire to sleep with a woman? That means, inshallah, you'll get something equal. Salah, salah. What your heart hasn't desired, 
what your eyes have seen, what your ear has heard. Amazing. So, inshallah, if you go to heaven, you will get something good, which inshallah you'll be satisfied. Inshallah. But the question is, first you have to enter heaven. <laughs> If you don't enter heaven, yeah, first you have to do jihad in heaven. You know, take your panty and go do jihad for Muslims and go to the ISIS, and this is called nikah jihad, you know, if jihad. Hmm. This is how you go to heaven. And you won't get that something which is good. Okay. Sister, do you want to accept Islam? Do, Not right now. <laughs> do you accept Islam? Come on, accept Islam. We will send you right now. You will, have, you will be satisfied. We have a lot of men, they are ready, they are horny. Fine, inshallah, go home, hmm. think about it and get convinced once you're convinced enter fast you don't know how long will you live that's it i'm going to cry but i thought he's going to talk about the whole horror go home do more research study more to go to heaven otherwise you don't go to heaven hope that answers the question a new no see in different video he uh, discovered now he correct himself he don't dare to say what he said before he said that whore is not a word for fe female not necessarily it's male for male and female but the quran says that those who they did not lose their virginity by breaking the skin of their vagina using the letter n in the end of the word which is the, the letter of women so this guy is a potato he is not you see here we have two guru one is a muslim guru and the other one is a hindu guru but obviously both of them they are in the stage for a wrong reason generation is coming young people whose thought process, whose way of looking at life has changed in many ways. Today, for the first time in the history of humanity, more human beings are able to think for themselves than ever before. So why they are coming to listen to you if they have people they can think for themselves more than ever before? If this is a true, nobody will be sitting, listening to you, asking you questions, and especially we're not asking you about explaining this verse or that verse, you are giving us philosophy of life. So if they have the answer, they will not need you. You are going to lose your business, my friend. Because then people will say, well, we can answer ourselves, we do not need you, let us go. Whether they're thinking right or wrong is not a debate, but they're thinking. Hmm. At one time, a scripture would think for you, a guru would think for you, an elder would think for you, one man in the village would think for you. Hmm. Today, everybody is beginning to think for themselves. Once this happens, people will become in such a way, unless something is logically correct, they cannot swallow it. Uh -huh. So it's logically that there is a karma exists before my exist. That is logical, which decide Free to my existence, my destiny. That is logic. Hmm. Aha. Uh -huh. So I was not there, but there was something, it's called karma, and this karma decides for me, but I wasn't me there yet. What me will be, but there's no me. After I became exist as me, what I will be. And that supposedly, you are saying how logic works. Right. <laughs> so, conclusion, and where is the guy who said to us, I challenge you to, re to play the whole video. Do you want me to play the whole video, rest of the video for you? No, we can't play it. There's nothing. He said nothing. He, actually, he finished the answer here. Here we go. I will play it again. The guy asked him, where was my karma before I might exist, my existence? I might exist. Where is the answer? Everybody knows this. Maybe they thought you are not worth answering. See, so he's, he's, he's insulting. He's saying, nobody answer me. This he said, maybe they thought you are not worth answering. But did he answer? The Hindu was listening. Be honest, did he answer, where was my karma? Where, what, before I exist? What is my karma? What is this karma is? Can you explain to me what this karma is? If there's nothing exists, what this karma, which is deciding for me what I will be, and what kind of uh, logic that is, that the karma would decide for me what I will be, which means, you, you know, you believe, you know, that I am not a free person. If I commit a crime, it's my karma decide for me to be a criminal.
If I am a good person, it's not me being a good person. It's my karma decide for me to be a good person. Is that fair? Is that justice? Is that the logic? So why we have jail? A person who went to jail because of a crime, he should not go to jail. The karma should go to jail. Correct? The one who made him do it is the karma. So why don't take the karma to jail? The guy is a victim. The same as Muslims. Allah, he decides for you what you will do. So why the person will be punished for what he did if Allah decides for you what to do before he create you? Allah should go to jail. If a woman, she committed adultery in Islam and she is married, the punishment is stoning to death. But it's Allah who decides for her to do adultery. So we should stone Allah. Do you understand what I'm saying? Those people who come with their own weird philosophy, doesn't matter what religion it is. This is all weird philosophy and stupid philosophy. Read with me and love. Verily Allah has fixed the very portion of adultery which a man will indulge in and which he of necessity must commit. So why you want to punish him for adultery? I mean, have you ever heard of a stupid religion more than this? So the guru bringing us a stupid stuff, Muhammad bringing us a stupid stuff, and there's no logic. Because now, both of them, they believe that it's not you who do good things or bad things. It is the, for the Hindu, the karma who decides for you. A certain energy, which is very weird energy, decide for you. How energy can decide for me? And how energy can write future? And what this karma, how it work? Is it implanted in my brain? And if it's implanted in my brain, brain, is it implanted in your body? Because in order to make something happen, you have to make it happen for everybody around me, not only me. You know what I mean? Let, let us make it simple. If they say that karma is the reason for things to happen, it's a pre-existence, uh, previous states of existence. It is a sum of the person action. Okay. So, I wasn't exist here yet. This is my karma. Let us switch to English. Okay. So now the karma is there, but I am not there yet. And this karma is going to decide for me what I will do in the coming, let us say, I will live for 70 years, 60 years, 80 years, God knows. So this karma is going to decide for me what I will do in the coming years when I exist. This is before I even exist, it does not exist yet. So let us say, this is the point of existence here. And then you have a journey after the existence, and this journey is going to fulfill the karma which is the karma decide for me. But in order for this karma to do to me what is supposed to be planned to do, it have to be the same karma for those who will inter interact with me. Let us say, when I was 30, let us say in this, in this stage here, let us say I was 30 years old. Okay. I was driving my car, and I, I fought with somebody uh, with me in the car, and I killed him. All right? Uh -huh. Sorry, I'm using virtual uh, for the keyboard, for the Arabic keyboard, so it's not coming right. All right. So in order for me to practice or the karma to happen to me, this karma should make that guy go in my car. When I am in the age of 30. 
You know what I mean? Yeah, guys, do you understand what I'm saying? Because as long as this karma is going to decide for me what I would do in my life, well, this karma obviously is not going to decide only for me, but decide to anyone who interacts with me. So it's not a plan for one person. It's planned for billions. You know what I mean? That's mean all the human beings, they are a programmed, uh, let us say, viruses or something like that, and they do a machinery behavior predecided by the karma. It's like the movie we see that there is a, a brain or like an eye, uh, you know, a fiction movie, a computer, a big computer, is controlling every human being. But this is not only stupid, this is impossible. Because nobody can, you know, control the circumstances of things. And this energy you are talking about, it's impossible to interact with an energy move by itself. So this is very stupid. And here, Muhammad is making the same stupid mistake. He is telling us that you have a karma, and this karma is Allah. And this karma, which is Allah, decide for you the very portion of adultery which a man will indulge in. Then he says to you, because you did the karma, which means you obey the karma, not willingly, Allah will punish you for practicing how Allah made you do it. So here we see that we don't have people who they are giving us answers. This is a stupid philosophy, confusing philosophy, make no sense. It's a stupid, coming from a stupid human being, trying to deceive you, trying to make himself superior from you. He have answers you don't. You know what I mean? Those who see we see in the stage, they are people trying to play a game that they are superior. They are superior in knowledge, they are superior in understanding, and you are the fool. And now we are going to explain to you how life works. The Muslim they have, a big fool, his name is Muhammad, he claimed to be the big guru. And he is superior of all mankind. And whatever Muhammad he say, he have to accept because you are a fool. He decides for you, he thinks for you. You should not think. Thinking is not allowed. The guru here, he is not saying to you, don't think, but he is saying to you what it's meant. You are a fool when you think. And let me think for you. And this is why he was making mockery of this poor kid all the video. And after speaking all this time, he said nothing, he answered nothing. How the creation came to existence? Go watch the video. One, I challenge you to watch the video one million times and tell me what is the answer for how the creation came to existence. And now he's making fun of him again. Because uh, I am such a fool, I don't think anybody is not worth answering. Yeah, but you made fun of him, you humiliated him. And the crowd is laughing. Because I don't think any question is not worth answering, I am taking all kinds of idiotic questions from all over the world. And there is no answer. <laughs> I'm taking questions from around all over the world. I mean, you see, you see that the, the self-worship from around the world. Hey, everybody around the world is asking him questions. He is the one who has the answer. And then we listen, we die laughing at the answer. The same as the answer of Muhammad and his God. You did not give an answer to the kid. And actually, if you give an answer, I mean, I will be happy to listen to it, to learn something. Maybe he can teach me something. Why not? I mean, we, we as a human, we think, and the smart one of us, he can help the one who is not. But I see here that somebody claiming to be something, someone, 
he have nothing to say except playing with the words. He have a skills of talking, but he have no ability of answering. <laughs> so, this is also because maybe you have some conclusion of your own, it's not really a question. You're testing everybody with your question, so they might have said, this happened. See, this is exactly what Muhammad did in the Qur'an. In chapter 5 verse 101, he said to them, ask not questions. Verse number 02, it says, why? Because the previous generation asked the same questions and they left Islam. So he's saying to him, maybe you have the question because you have a conclusion inside you. He's accusing him now, he's a, he's a guilty. This guy now is a guilty. He's a bad person. If you have a conclusion, he will not be asking you because he did not give you the conclusion yet. He's saying where I was. How this is can be a conclusion? A committed, uh, you know, marijuana is legal in many states in the United States. So as a man who is committed to this, because a lot of people are approaching it like a philosophy. It is not just a compulsion that they have, it's a philosophy, we smoke. So we are superior to you. Hmm. See, this one is exactly. Yes. This is exactly. There is some. This is exactly what I said. I did not see this part of the video, by the way. Imagine this guy. He knew now that people they are going to think that he is claiming to be superior. But you are the one who just said a second ago. People they ask me from around the world why you are mentioning this if you are humble. If you are not a person trying to say to us that you, have a, you are a superior, why you are giving all this lecture to this guy, him, humiliating him, making people laugh at him, and you did not shout, say, shame on you, why you are laughing at the guy? And you are laughing with them too. In the top of that, you are saying, there's many they claim to be superior. Well, you are doing that. After all this humiliation, who is the superior here? Isn't it obvious? There's a one is sitting in the chair on the stage, all the lights on him, holding the microphone, the other person cannot even talk. The poor guy, he just even delivered the question, he did not even hear his voice. They give it in written, maybe they are afraid that he might ask question by his voice, might he say something embarrassing. 